ANC Deputy President Paul Mashatile and other party bigwigs have visited the grave of one of the party's founding fathers, Thomas Mtobi Mabikela, ahead of the party's January 8th statement in Bloemfontein. Our reporters, Gavin Whittles and Mbali Tatani, are in the Free State province and join us live. Gavin, we'll start off with you. Good to catch up. What's the latest on the ground? Thank you, Hugo. We're joining you from yet another lodge venue where we're expecting a briefing from the party secretary general, uh, Fikile Mbalula. He'll outline the resolutions of the 55th National Congress. Um, as we've seen by now, some of them have started leaking. Earlier, Newsroom Africa speaking to the national chairperson, Gwede Mantashe, who revealed that they decided to defer the discussion on one member, one vote. Uh, that would, of course, require a change to the ANC constitution. Uh, the ANC national chairperson and telling Newsroom Africa that they couldn't um, gather two-thirds of the uh, party delegates there to make that change. They decided to postpone it uh, to the future. But more significantly, we've caught up with the ANC's new deputy president, Paul Mashatile. He says that he hasn't discussed the prospect of him becoming the deputy president of the country. He's revealed that the current deputy president of the country, David Mabuza, uh, has not been attending the events leading up to January 8th or the second leg of the conference after not being elected back to the NEC because he had to attend to a family matter. But Paul Mashatile did give us a response uh, when asked what, whether he expects to be deployed uh, to be the deputy president of the country. He says that he's ready to serve, but let's hear it from the man himself uh, who spoke to Newsroom Africa uh, on the sidelines of a wreath-laying ceremony at the grave of the ANC's first treasurer general. Well, for now, I've been elected as deputy president of the ANC. I worked at Lutuli House. If I get invited to government at some point, uh, I will go and join them. Kevin, there has been talk about the mandate of the Reserve Bank changing, certainly to impact uh, uh, unemployment. There has been, and what's interesting about the resolution taken at this conference is that it takes a step back from the call for the nationalization of the South African Reserve Bank. Uh, we spoke to the outgoing chair of the ANC's Economic Transformation Committee, uh, Mamaloka Gubai, who's also been elected to the NEC, who says that they've decided uh, to pursue what would be the changing of the Reserve Bank mandate to create employment. Importantly, the National Conference has resolved that the NEC uh, should take up this task and they should essentially conduct a feasibility study about whether that would be possible, admitting that right now there doesn't seem to be a framework in place to do this. Uh, it's only a hope expressed by the delegates of the conference. She's also revealed that the delegates of the conference specifically resolved that control of ESCOM, Transnet and Denel should return to their line departments. That is the Department of Energy, Transport and the Department of Defense. That's an important resolution and it reflects uh, the call that had been coming from within the, the ANC, particularly from delegates who were supporting the national chairperson, Gwede Mantash, uh, for him to be given a chance to be in control of ESCOM. It seems like now he has the backing of the ANC. We should point out that the prerogative of shifting the functioning of a department uh, or of a state-owned entity to a specific department lays with the president. According to the government and constitution, the president doesn't need a resolution from a party to, do, uh, to take such a decision and is not um, uh, bound by the decision of the party uh, as uh, or technically speaking, uh, of course, he would be held accountable by the delegates of the conference now that they've explicitly um, have made a resolution for him to do so. Uh, essentially, all they've done is up the pressure for the president to move these departments, particularly ESCOM, to the control of Gwede Mantashe. That's likely to uh, have a big um, pushback in society already, uh, people talking about it. But, of course, Gwede Mantash has put as one of his priorities ESCOM's energy availability factor. That would mean um, uh, lifting it from 50% back to 75% uh, at an economic dialogue that Newsroom Africa attended today. That was one of the big talking points, and many of the experts seem to believe that it was still possible despite the cases of sabotage, theft, um, and the unplanned trips at ESCOM. But let's take Take a listen to what Mamaloka Kubai had to say about the South African Reserve Bank um, and that resolution about changing its mandate. 
Obviously, delegates asked us about accounting for, more importantly, around the issue of monetary policy and the Reserve Bank. There was even some of the proposals that uh, the current mandate of the Reserve Bank needs to change in terms of looking at the issue of employment, and we must look at opportunities, how we can do that. Others will talk about the issue of section uh, amendment of the Constitution, and our experience with amendment of the Constitution obviously links to our experience with the land question, that we couldn't. So we'll have to look at me the mechanisms of ensuring that we can be able to see that mandate being carried out while we navigate in that era. So from implementation, we'll look into it. And also as we finalize the drafting, we'll look at what would work better and how it will come across as we do those drafting and sending to the NEC for final approval. Governor, appreciate that update. Also in Bloemfontein, as Mbali Titani with the ANC's first Deputy Secretary, Nomvula Mkunyane, is conducting a door-to-door -door campaign and drumming up support for the community to attend the event. Uh, Mbali, great to catch up with you. How successful has that door-to-door -to -door been? Well, Hugo, we continue to give you rolling coverage of the ANC's January 8th celebrations, and we know that uh, they are indeed building up uh, to see those celebrations take place on the 8th here in Mangahung. Uh, but at the same time, we know that the first Deputy Secretary General of the ANC, Nombula Mukonyane, has taken some time out to go on a door-to-door -door campaign and to visit uh, the community of Mangahung. At the same time, also visiting child-headed homes and also those making a difference in this community. I'm going to bring her in now. Mam Nombula, thank you so much uh, for having this interview with us. Firstly, I'd like to say congratulations. I believe we have not had an interview with you. First time. Yes, it's the thank, first time. Thank you very much, and um, I'm glad to be with you now. Yes. When it comes to the new role that uh, you are taking up in the ANC, it is a role that um, you had a close links with Mam Jesu Duarte. Um, somebody that uh, you know was you were very fond of and had a very personal relationship. How do you feel taking over after her? It's actually an honor. It's an honor for me to be a Deputy Secretary General of the ANC, following in the footsteps of Comrade Jesse Duarte. And um, it, it has given me a new lease of life to say her journey must continue, her struggle must continue. And um, Part of what I'm looking forward to is, to is to contribute towards the rebuilding of the ANC, the unity of the ANC, uh, making the ANC to be relevant like we've seen here today, the ANC Youth League doing such a very, very good work, uh, not just having fun, but touching lives and making a difference. And uh, that's the legacy of Jesse Duarte. You are going to child headed homes here in Mangaung at the same time visiting those who are making a difference in this community. I mean, just a short while ago, we went to visit a woman who continues to just take care of children who are in need of a home. You know, surely when you look at these kind of issues, these are raw problems that many in this community are facing. Bali, you know what uh, has happened and is continuing to happen today is that. Uh, there's life in the Youth League. Um, the NYTT is trying to bring life because it's branches of the Youth League in the area that have done community profiles, identified people who make a difference, identified vulnerable, vulnerable child-headed households. And um, it actually says we can't continue theorizing about poverty and inequality under development. And what has been quite humbling as well, solutions have been found. Young entrepreneurs have assisted the Youth League with all the goodies that they are leaving behind. Secondly, we've just moved out of a house of uh, three kids um, in a vandalized uh, a house that has burned up. And we've found a good Samaritan who, without any government money or anything, is partnering with the NC Youth League to come in here on Sunday after the speech by the president to come and visit the kids and ensure that they build not only the house but build backyard uh, rooms so that then the kids can be able to have rental rooms that can assist them. It's the kind of organization that we are yearning for. It's the kind of ANC that should be making a difference doing things for communities and ending being a leader of society. And I think uh, 
it's been an emotional experience, but it's been very also heartening that uh, there are good men and women who have come out to say we'll work with the ANC Youth League. You've been also conducting a door-to-door -door campaign. One also then looks at the performance of the ANC uh, during the local government elections. You continue uh, to take a dip. When you look at the reception you've been given by the residents here, how has that been for you? Look, everybody is saying we, we, we welcome the ANC being here, but please solve our problems. But one of the most important messages is stop fighting amongst yourselves. To uh, and, and I think it's a, it's a very serious message. It, it speaks to the need for unity. It speaks to the need around issues of discipline. It also speaks to the, to, 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 to the need for us to, to evaluate whether we've got capable men and women who are deployed to do our work. But we are also quite humbled because our councillors are known here. Our members of the World Committee are known here. The leadership of the NC Youth League actually knows the community profile. And, and we believe we must lift that up. What has been missing is that national leadership that picks up on these kind of issues. And thanks to the leadership of the NYTT that uh, they've picked up these matters. And I've said to them, it's good, I've been supported and voted for, but uh, the future branch of the NC Youth League and the NC that is in good standing must be a branch that deals with societal issues. Mangahung municipality continues to face a lot of challenges. This specific city continues to see something called hashtag Mangawum shutdown in the hands of the ANC. People here continue to complain about the services, service delivery, potholes. I mean, even on social media this past week, we've been seeing uh, the Free State trending for just plain issues like, you know, the streets are not in good shape and good form. As the ANC, what promises are you giving to this community that these are the issues that you are attending to as the governing party? A divided ANC will never be able to, to be relevant to the community. The man, hashtag Mangawum shutdown happens all because the very deployees of the ANC are fighting among themselves. The very structures of the ANC are divided. Our commitment is that the national conference actually broke the slates. The national conference elected a united leadership. The outcomes of the conference, the resolutions, are calling for unity, are calling for renewal in action. And uh, we, we, we believe that this is a metro that we must defend. This is a metro that we must reposition. This is a metro that uh, even national interventions must be sustainable and not just a hit and run. You'll be holding your first NEC meeting uh, today, I believe, at 6 o'clock. Some of the issues that uh, we can look into when it comes to planning that speech, we know that, uh, of course, what takes place in that speech translates uh, to uh, the State of the Nation address. What can we expect as uh, the NEC uh, to be highlighted in that speech? I know that an, a very big problem that South Africans continue to complain about is the issue around load shedding and electricity. Yes, the issues around energy security, not just load shedding, energy security in terms of access, in terms of sustainability, in terms of making sure that uh, we, 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 we also are able to reach out to those that have never actually had access to electricity. The second issue would be about jobs and, uh, and, and unemployment. And because that affects mostly young people, so a lot of our attention is on the future of this country and how we work together with the young people, as well as uh, the vulnerability of women, gender-based violence as something that is quite uh, critical in, in our society. Then the issues of uh, making the NC stronger by building a strong alliance the need for a, a, a tripartite alliance that has got a program and a leadership of the ANC that is rooted amongst the people. Thank you very much. You. That is the first Deputy Secretary General of the ANC, Nombula Mukonyane, just talking about uh, some of the issues that will be highlighted uh, in the January 8th statement of the President, one in particular being the issue around the energy security. We know uh, that a number of South Africans continue uh, to complain and, you know, just iron out this issue around uh, the load shedding, the electricity crisis that we continue to face in this country. But at the same time, Hugo, we know that uh, that meeting is expected to sit in the next hour or so.
Well, it's Tony, appreciate your time coming to us live from Mangawong.